Is everyone okay, by the way? Is everyone all right? Yeah? Can I have a quick show of hands those who have done presentation skills at work? Can I have a quick show of hands in the room? That's about right for a room this size. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what I'm going to do today, Rob's going to fire something up for me. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'm sure he's going to mic me up in a second. Um, but what I decided to do was maybe talk about presentations as a hypnotherapist. And if you want to bring some of the ideas into your talks, that's fine. Is that alright with everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, what I've found though is that as a hypnotherapist, hypnosis is a lovely intriguing subject that people are just interested in. And what I'm doing, whilst Rob's doing this, I'm actually recording my talk as well on a device at the back. I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to talk about creating products so that you actually have a product you can go away with to your practice. Would that be okay as well? Yep. 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 Okay, good. We're online. All right. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're picking the sound up or not at the moment, but I'm going to carry on because I've got an idea that it is reaching the back of the room. Yeah? Thanks, Neil. Okay. When you're asked to do a talk on creating great presentation on hypnosis and you're sitting at the back, one of the things you're bound to do is start to critique other people's presentations. Um, but the thing that I was looking for is what was their differences. So from Mark's presentation on the three cups, I liked that. It got me thinking, definitely. Mark always does what I would say a very sort of technical style of presentation, does a lot of research. And the history of psychoanalysis definitely is going to be something that's going to, you know, be on our minds. If you look at the end of the day, Elaine did a presentation on emotional intelligence and was really good with this thing called PowerPoint. PowerPoint is just a manufacturer's name. That is it. You know, that should not be your presentation when you're talking to a group. That's something that helps you. Okay, when I came in this morning, I checked the room out. So I'm going to go through that with you. I'm going to go through what I did and how I asked Jonathan to do a couple of things. You see, if you're asked to give a talk to a group, it's your responsibility for the platform when it's your turn to talk. Does that make sense in the room? Yeah? yeah. Yes or no, yeah? yeah. Okay, really important. The, the placing of things is important. It really is. I'm a right-handed person. If I want to use a flip chart, it goes on this side of the room, not that side. If I put it that side, it isolates me from the room. Does everyone sort of see where I'm going on that one, yeah? <laughs> so what I'm doing is the technical stuff I've picked up over the years as a professional speaker and as someone that has to do enormous amount of presentations in business and to audiences on hypnosis. I calculate, doing a quick calculation, I used to do uh, about 10 or 12 talks, no, no, probably more, about 20 talks a year at Ragdale Hall. Who's out of Ragdale Hall? Can I have a show of hands? Yeah, Ragdale Hall is a very famous health spa that was let down by one hypnotherapist a number of years ago who didn't turn up for a talk. I got a call, and the call was, we've been let down, do you think you could come in and give us a talk? Yes, yeah, sure. I turned up there with three pieces of paper stapled together. That was a talk I did about two months prior to that, to a group at the Deaf Society. No, they weren't deaf. <laughs> it was just a, a group that met deaf. Thank you very much. I can lip read. And all I did is just use that as, as the base of my presentation. Eight, nine, ten years on or whatever. And probably 12,000 people listening to my talk later on or whatever. I became fairly okay at that presentation. When Neil stood up and did his style of presentation, you know, when I remember way back when I first joined the IAH, before it was the IPH, and listened to Neil do his talk, it was about, not, not the same, but his style was about the same. It would be true to say that maybe we wouldn't do all that preparation. It was there. It's in built. He's done it thousands of times. So for people in the room who have never done a presentation before, or a couple, that can be a little bit daunting. It really can. But what I want to do is put together, uh, and I have put together, what I call sort of the five key areas that as hypnotherapists you can use to present. You okay with that? Yeah? Okay. So we've talked about placement. I asked Jonathan, would you mind, okay, when you come into the room, if you're going to talk and you want something to happen, you speak to the person or the people that are looking after. I said, would you mind if you move over a little tiny bit? I don't want to offend you, but I do need the flip chart there. Okay? The PowerPoint presentation was put together sort of yesterday and the day before just to show you PowerPoint style that I may use if I wanted to in a group. Oh, that's the sound, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so the key thing is to be different. To be different. On there, it had Gary Foster, hypnotherapist, and alligator wrestler. Do you believe that, yes or no? Yeah. But I'm holding the alligator, is that right? And some of you might be thinking, now what did that make you think of? Because you can't help yourself. <laughs> you just can't. You know, slimy reptile between your legs. <laughs> 
would I be daring enough to have that photograph when I'm presenting? Well, why not? I might as well test it. You know, if it goes, if it bombs down, well, fine, it's not going to kill me. But the big different thing, again, is important. If you, it was interesting when John, where are you, John? Thank you, John. Because John did two or three things I was thinking of doing in my presentation. If I wasn't in the room listening to John, you might be a speaker that's going to follow a couple of speakers presenting on your hypnotherapy business. I may have copied John's arm turning movement which is something that I often use with audiences, I don't, and I wouldn't do that, and I thought, wow, good job I was in the room, yeah? So it's always good just to see what other speakers are doing and what other people are presenting like, yeah? So be different, how could you be different? Maybe the opening, you know, when I walked out there, I didn't wait to be mic'd up, I started my presentation for you. Okay, I wanted to start it because in about 34 minutes, your stomachs are going to rumble because it's lunchtime. Yeah, and I want to give you loads of information. Okay, so, so get straight into, into the talk in your presentation. Give information out as quick as you can. Get people active. Get in your arm movement. Did you notice I've got your arms to move? Yes or no, yeah? Yes. Yeah, and I'm doing yes or no, yeah? Yes. So I'm getting you to agree. I use my favourite phrase, that's about right for room this size. Rob heard me say that probably eight, nine years ago. People still copy that phrase. You can use that phrase in therapy. When someone comes in and moans and whatever, you say, you know, that's about right for a person your type. It has to be right, doesn't it? Yeah, it just does. So those sort of things are things that you can use as what I call the taglines, your tag phrase, your personality. Definitely. Can I just show you very quickly what I would normally do as well when I'm with groups? Could you stand up for a second? This is going to be a very quick exercise. I only do this if you can stand up comfortably. Can you take a deep breath in, arms up in the air, and just breathe out and moan. Ah, oh, thank you. Deep breath in again. Arms up in the air, excited moan. Ah, last time, deep breath, arms up in the air, orgasmic moan, go. Ah, have a seat, thank you very much. <laughs> Tell me, why did you do that? Do you, do you always do as you're told? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for some of you you don't, but you just did then, okay. Very quick icebreaker, being different, icebreaker, getting people involved. Also, when you're leading up to say a lunch break, you know, the blood sugar levels are dropping a little tiny bit, get people active, get people moving. What could you do in your presentations to do that? All right. Um, like I said, we'll talk about the rules of creating this presentation. So the first thing was the intro. Rob, thank you very much for the introduction. It was done exactly how I would have asked someone to have done it. If I didn't know Rob, I would write it out. My normal introduction is this. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please welcome our next speaker today, Gary Foster. And that's it. I don't want a long spiel read out about all my great achievements that maybe I've made up. Because the audience are thinking, if he's that good, why is he speaking? Do you see where I'm going on that? Yeah. They want to get straight in and listen to what you have to say. So the least amount that you can sort of build into the intro, the better. Okay, that was one of the tips I picked up from one of the world's best professional speakers. Keep it very simple, get straight into it. Everyone happy with that? Yeah? So then what I'd do, okay, I've done the introduction, I've probably got them moving around a little tiny bit, and yes, I would do that in a group. I can remember once I did that at an organisation called the Universe of the Third Age. Anyone heard of that one at all? Yeah, the universe of the third age, for those that want to promote your business within your area to people that are 65 years or over, that's where they meet. Uh, I was asked to talk to a group in a place called Market and Harbour, and I thought there was going to be a dozen people there. And I brought along some sheets of information, which you'll see later on. And when I arrived there, I was greeted by a host. Now, the host had a lovely carnation on, and there was a little note saying, you know, welcome to the universe of the third age, Gary, we've got everything ready for you. I said, really? Okay. So I walk into the room where I'm going to speak, and the chairs are all laid out. 150 chairs. They said, we're going to get you mic'd up now. I said, mic'd up? Why? Because we've got 150 people looking forward to your talk. Tell me, how would you feel? You've prepared for 12, there's 150. What do you do? Panic. Panic? Anything, anyone else? What do you do? Stay the same. You've got your talk prepared, you know what you're going to do. All that you really have to do where possible is just be aware of the room and the dynamics and the energy. When you're presenting to say six people, you wouldn't use that same energy, you present to 2,000. It just, it just, it's not going to happen. But you still have to be aware, okay, the numbers. So I kick off my talk, do you remember that arm raising exercise? I'm looking around the room and you know a lot of people in their 70s and 80s, I thought, I don't want them to stand up, but take bloody ages. <laughs> so I said, while she's sitting there, can you, put, you know, bring your arms up and down? I thought, don't say, you know, Kui's law, right? Don't say orgasmic moan. <laughs> so what happened? 
I'm on the third one. Orgasmic moment. So, and this guy let out the greatest sigh. Big smile on his face. He woke up. He was in his 80s, been dribbling. He woke up and he went, Oh, that was wonderful. I fell back to sleep again. Now, from that talk, I did pick up about five or six referrals. Obviously, because um, they're going to have family members that might be interested in what I do and friends. And the whole idea is to make sure they can contact you. And you say, I'm going to do that later on today. Okay? So, from that particular presentation, sort of five referrals from people that may want to come and see me as a hypnotherapist and a speaking engagement. Yeah, I mean, it's all money into the business. Today, I'm really talking to you as a, as a hypnotherapist but from a business point of view, not about the therapy side. So, if I was going to use that, okay, the PowerPoint presentation behind me, I might think, okay, then I've got a few points I want to make. <sighs> Oops, okay. Okay, technology. So what? So my first part might be about what is hypnosis? Okay, so I'm using a bit of an image. Here's the key points from people that put uh, amazing presentations together for the cor corporates at the moment. This is what they say. Big image, one or two words, that's it. Don't get your audience to read out from there because they can read. Okay? If you're doing a lecture type presentation, then you can have stuff you want people to read, like quotes, etc. Doing a presentation on hypnotherapy. Who's the person that should be doing the presentation? The person standing here, not the screen behind you. Very, very important, okay? Because people buy you. They really will. It's interesting when they say, can I have a copy of your slides? I go, really? There's nothing on them. Okay, it's just a, it's a memory jogger. Anyone use a computer in the room? Just, just quick show of hands, yeah? Okay. When uh, it was MS-DOS, do you remember when you had to write those batch files? Yeah. And then what happened is that uh, there was a guy called Bill Gates thought, I think I'll create some images for people because that's better for them to use. And that's how PCs really exploded in the marketplace. So just a big image to make a point, okay, what? So what is hypnosis? So what you could do there is talk about maybe the history of hypnosis, a brief history of psychoanalysis maybe, some of the heroes of um, psychoanalysis, uh, maybe talk about uh, what it isn't. <coughs> What one point I use about what it isn't is how many people in the room drive a car, just quickly? Yeah, okay. How many people who drive a car get to where they're meant to be and thought, how did I get there? Quick show of hands again. Keep your hands up, look around the room, these are the dangerous drivers, yeah? <laughs> That's my quick explanation of hypnosis, really. It's an altered state of awareness hypnosis. It's nothing to be afraid of, you can be aware of everything, and really, if you can drive a car, you can be hypnotised. Is that okay? And often they go, yes. From a sales perspective, I'm getting loads of yeses. Yeah? What are you looking for when you're giving a presentation on hypnotherapy? You're looking to promote your business, I hope. You're looking to promote hypnosis and maybe a person who's not a quack. Maybe a person who hasn't got the swinging watch, even though I've put a swinging watch up there. Because I actually said, that's not really what we do. We don't use swinging watches. A professional hypnotherapist will often use the words, will actually work with you, find out what you really want to change in your life and help you do that. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah? Are you busy writing notes? Yeah, because you can't have a copy of my slides. <laughs> They'll be different. What? How? Okay. How do we do that? How do we help people? And then this is where I might talk about the different types of therapies that we have. So, for example, the suggestion therapy. I'll often say, has anyone ever seen um, that entertainer on TV called Darren Brown? I'll often say, yeah, or Paul McKenna will say, yeah. What I never, ever, ever do, I never criticise the presenters. Never, ever criticise them, because if I don't criticise in me, as soon as I put someone down, there might be a few people in the audience that quite like Darren Brown, that maybe have been interested to, to see me, and now they're thinking, I don't like you. I did a talk at Ragdale Hall ages ago, well, actually, no, a couple of years ago now, it's, it's been recorded, and I was quite happy with it, and at the very end, this gentleman came up to me, quite angry, quite unusual. And he said, uh, I didn't like the thing you said about Paul McKenna. I thought, what thing was that? He said, you, you said he makes fun of people. I said, really? I said, no, I think I said that what he does, you know, he makes fun so people can actually enjoy that. And what I do is, my aim is to help people have fun in their life, and there's a slight difference there. No, I really don't like what you said. At that point, maybe I did lose a little bit of my sort of internal locus control and thought, well, it's his fault then for not believing what I was saying. I said, are you Paul McKenna's dad? Because <laughs> he was pissing me off. Because I had a row of women that wanted to talk to me about hypnosis. You know, he's getting in the way. Getting in the way. He's not going to become a client. 
I get a bit tough really and he wandered off. The woman behind me, sorry, behind him walked up to me and said, he was getting on your nerves as well, wasn't he? I said, yes. <laughs> you know, you don't have to agree with everyone in the audience, but where possible, try and get them on your side. <laughs> yeah. So, where possible, avoid putting down any competition. Yeah. So, when we're talking about the how, okay, there's free association that we use. You can maybe go through some exercises, you know, just throw some words out, what's the first thing that comes into your mind. And maybe then, maybe explore a little bit more about the hypnosis. Yeah. What I'd like you to do though is that when I'm going through, if there's anything that comes into your mind, please fire out questions because there's no question and answers at the end. Would that be right with everyone? Yeah? Okay. So then, who? Who are the type of clients that we may want to treat? So what I've done, again, on purpose, is just played around with this thing behind me so I can use it as a visual aid. From that visual aid, I may want to expand a little tiny bit more. I may want to expand a bit more of the type of people that we sort of work with. <coughs> Might be people with body image problems. Now, there's one particular gentleman I don't think has a problem, but they're the sort of areas, you know, like body dysmorphia, or where people, I had a lady come to me recently, she had SPD. Does anyone know what SPD is in the room? No? Wow, okay, she did research on Google. Okay, it's called skin picking disorder. Yeah, she'd sit in front of a mirror for an hour, just picking at her skin, and then make her face up and spend hours making up the crevices. Every day should be forever. She lived in a house where every mirror in the, in the home had coverings over them so she didn't look at herself in the mirror. Yeah? I don't think this guy's got a particular type of problem though. Yeah? People suffer with IBS. Anyone work with people with IBS in the room? Yeah? You know, if you give a talk or presentation, I can probably guarantee at least 20 or 30% of that audience will either have IBS conditions or know someone. Yeah? So, often though, some people with IBS find a way of using that to their, their benefit. And this particular guy wants to run a, a barbecue on it. <laughs> I know some people, that, he's turning the negative into a positive, is that right? Yeah. We also work with people who suffer from fears and phobias. Now, when I'm asked, what do you do? You see, this presentation I'm giving today about making presentations could be at a business event where you've got two or three people around you, you've been asked to stand up for one minute, and I'll show you the elevator speech that you can use, and that could be your presentation, <coughs> definitely. And if I'm asked, what do you do? I say, well, I actually help people overcome their fears, phobias, depression, panic attacks, and anxiety. That is exactly what they get. Exactly what they get. Sometimes they're like that in the clinic, okay? It's, it's, it's horrible, it really is. Okay. So what do you say when someone asks you, what do you do? What do you do? If you say I'm a hypnotherapist, that's what you are. And that's not correct, is it? Yeah, remember, I, my English went up to CSE level, but I do know one thing. When someone asks me, what do I do? I tell them what I do. You know, at business events, you have people come to say, they might say to a group of people, so what do you do? They say, I'm an accountant, I'm a solicitor, yeah, I'm a stuntman, yeah, I'm a hypnotherapist, but that's not particularly true, is it? What do you really do? Now, if you use the evangelical one, which is like, I change people's lives. <laughs> Has anyone met life coaches at all? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. It's amazing. If, you, if you're ever around a group of life coaches, the things that they want to do often to you is change your life and they're with you. Yeah, you ever notice that? Yeah, or have you ever noticed if you're with people like this, within this, and it will happen when you're presenting, because you never know who's in the room. I'm very careful when I'm presenting what I'll say. But this is from experience. If I'm with a group of life coaches, generally speaking, they're talking about themselves far more than asking me questions about my life. Yeah, and that goes for hypnotherapists as well, I'm afraid. Yeah, far more interested in telling me how great things are going all the time, rather than asking questions. The ability when you're presenting is to have a conversation with the audience. I genuinely would say to what you know, Peter. Okay. I often say to audience members, look, this is your talk, this is your presentation. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to go with it, but if you ask me loads of questions, then you can get a lot from it. Would that be all right? Yeah? What do you think they're going to say? Yes or no, yeah? Because yeah. I'm asking them to get involved, I really am. Because if you don't get involved, you're not going to get the benefit from it. And I will say that to them. This is your talk, your presentation. What would you like to get from it today, Ian? It's become more confident. More confident. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, it's so got more confident. Anyone else in the room? Lee, what would you like? Today. What would you like to get from this talk today? First thing that pops in your mind. 
just be more effective at getting the message off. More effective? Okay, thank you. Oh, let's have a look. Anna, what would you like? Yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Again, well, quite happy. I'll probably ask Rob just to break that down, just to show what the slides are like. I'm not going to assume that everyone knows how to put a PowerPoint presentation together. It might be the first time you're thinking about doing talks. Very rarely would I use this. I'm just bringing it in because let's say that broke down, okay? So just before the event last night, I came into the room. And I thought, well, I better do something just in case the bulb goes on Rob's projector. Yeah, because it could happen. It could happen to you if you're doing a presentation. What happens if the mains fails? What are you going to do? You bring a PowerPoint and I've got my team. Sue, help me with regards to the, the memory stick. We put it on, made sure there was a couple of things, two or three different versions of PowerPoint on there, just to make sure it would work. So, if it didn't work, I've already put it down on there on the flip chart. Remember, I'm right-handed. The flip chart had to go there. It's not going to go there. A couple of speakers have been trapped in that corner. Trapped in that corner. And I've got a big room. I've got to look at all the room around there from there. Yeah, if I can sort of have this sort of centre stage and walk around here a little tiny bit, get some eye contact, talk amongst you a little tiny bit, pick out some names that I know, it brings you in as an audience. Everyone okay with that? Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. What I'm doing is showing you the mechanics. Rather than trying to do a great entertaining talk and get you rah 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 up, this is about helping you grow your business. Helping you grow your business. So, what I've done here, very quickly, be different. Can, can everyone see that? Yeah? Yeah, anyone not see that? Okay, good. What? Yeah? We've seen that, it's there. So I could spin that over. I can talk to you as a right handed presenter, I'm using my left hand. Yeah? I'm facing you. I'm not doing this and I'm going to show you. I'm not looking at the flip chart writing on it. I'm looking at you. These are all tips and tricks that you can sort of take on board if you want. How? And who? Yeah. And it would just go on and on and on. Everyone okay with that? So it's being prepared. Boy Scouts. Never mind about the founder being a bit of a kiddie fiddler. Yeah? Being prepared is very, very, very important. really is. Some people, like I say, can stand up and just talk. There have been many times when I've been at an event and someone said to me, 10 minutes, do you mind just doing something? Yes, that's fine. Because I know it's a business opportunity for me and I've got a stock talk in my mind. Yeah? Be ready. Be prepared. Have it ready already. And you'll see later on what I mean by that. Let's take the time. Okay. Any questions so far? Everyone okay with it? Am I going through the points all right, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So let's look at the points. First thing is your intro and your icebreaker. Okay, icebreakers. is, is another icebreaker. It's a hypnotherapist. I did this at a business meeting in Birmingham ages ago and it really sort of grabbed them. I'm going to show you another icebreaker as well that you can use in the room. Icebreaker. I stood there for 30 seconds. Mark Twain was very famous for doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, that was 30 seconds of silence. One person has already died of a smoking related illness. My name is Gary Foster. I hope people become non smokers. What I'd like to today is tell you how I actually do that. Would that be okay? In that sort of few moments, do you think I might grab their attention, yes or no? Yes. yes, absolutely. Silence is golden, without a doubt. That wasn't 30 seconds, I don't know how long it was. And then just looking around the room. That's one little way of getting an icebreaker. The other one is a testimonial. Maybe some of them may have stopped smoking. You may have changed their life, and they stand up and go, really delighted. Me from Scotland. Yeah, we had a quick chat, didn't we? Yes. Yep. And I did a tele seminar a little while back on helping therapists with regards to advertising. Yep. You got ten seconds. Could you? Would you mind just quickly stand up and tell everyone the difference it made and what it taught you very quickly? You've got ten seconds if you don't mind, Mick. Uh, Gary, again, this seminar, the telephone conference was about advertising, and actually got back to him and said it wasn't about advertising. It was about creating an advert that wasn't an advert and it just changes the way you look. If I look at adverts I don't read them. If I do the way that Gary was explaining, I will read it because it looks more like an article than an advert. Thank you. And read it, but you're still Thank you. Can we give Mick a big round of applause? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks Mick. And I really appreciate that. Before I did my presentation Mick, did I ask permission to do that? Yes. Thank you. And that's what you do. 
that is what you do. If you can find someone who's quite prepared to send up a look, went to see Gary recently, let's say it's a sports person, and uh, I was feeling a little bit sort of low in my confidence, sorry, let's say John, you know, you had someone, you're talking to a group, and you've noticed it's a group of sports people, and uh, you've got someone who's done really well, and they stand up and say, look, went to see John, amazing, I didn't think I'd come anywhere, I came second, um, really sort of boosted my confidence, got my sort of self-talk, sort of that you need to see him, yeah. When that person sits down, no matter what you now say, that testimonial is a hundred times better than whatever you can present. That's why we use testimonials. It's called social proof. The psychology of social proof is so what? It's so obvious, isn't it? Does everyone understand what social proof is? Yeah, for those that don't, social proof... There's a great book by Cialdini, uh, Robert Cialdini, called Influence, the Power of Persuasion. And in that book he talks about social proof, that when people believe in something, it must be right. And when enough people believe in it, it definitely must be right. So that's what testimonials do. Wonderful thing, social proof. That's all right, Mark. Okay, confidence. The biggest challenge I've found with a lot of hypnotherapists is that when I talk about doing talks and presentations, they go, oh, I don't think I could do it. My social phobia gets in the way. Okay. It might get in the way, but let me tell you this. So let's say you're charging £50 a session for therapy, on average. Anyone charge £50 a session, roughly? Okay. Anyone charge less than that? It's okay. Less? More? Okay, so we've got an average figure. Would you be okay with that, guys? Average figures? Yeah. Right, okay, so 50 pounds. So you do a talk, and I would definitely estimate, without a doubt, if you do a talk and use your personality, and you talk about hypnosis, you talk about what you can help people with, you talk about some of the case histories, okay, you build it into the audience, you bring some of the audience in. I've, I've used Ian's name, because I've met Ian. We know each other, don't we, Ian? Yeah? I can assure you, if I'm going to speak to a group, I will network that group. I will get to know as many people as possible. So I can call them by their names. And that, that's just like shaking their hands and building rapport. It makes sense to me. You always arrive early, regardless, not on time. If you're going to present, that might be very anal. But let's just move the psychology out of the way just for a moment. Yeah, it's good manners in business, or if you're presenting, you're early. It's your responsibility to set the room up. Okay, but just think about this in your mind. Just for those that may be saying, oh, I'm not sure if the website's working, and I'm doing adverts, and I don't seem to be bringing people in. Okay, £50 a session. If you've got 20 people in the audience, you know, if, you, if you're just half good, and good enough, I forget, was it Mark that was talking about the psychologist that was good enough? Is that good enough? Was it Lacan or someone like that? Something like that. Okay. If I'm 10% good, I'm going to get two clients, okay? Two zero clients. And let's say on average, just say on average, they both go into psychoanalysis, hypnoanalysis, and it's eight sessions. For an example, yeah? I don't know. How much is that, please? 800 quid. 800 pounds. Who'd like an extra 800 pounds in their business? Can I have a show of hands right now? Okay. That's okay. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Because that helps you promote your business. The whole idea is that when we're helping people... Years ago, I did a, a course in, in Blackpool, and it was on uh, sports injuries. That that's, that's was my first step into therapy. And there was a guy there called Ken Woodward. Ken Woodward was... I would say he's in alignment with Neil with regards to how he founded the, the association. Very straightforward, no messing about. You know, he just told you the way it was. And he said, uh, a lot of you therapists have problems asking for the money. He said, well, why don't you just look at it this way? Money is a token of appreciation. The more they appreciate you, the more tokens you get. Yeah? Does that sound okay? That reframed me very quickly. So, £800, doing a talk to 20 people. Is that okay? Do you think you could do that for half an hour? Yeah, yeah 40 minutes, yes or no, yeah? Yes. Sometimes figures can scare people, but I did work one out. Like, I've, had, I've had loads of lovely business opportunities from speaking on hypnosis to groups, such as Ragdale Hall, which is a health farm. Anywhere where your target market is going to be, that's where you want to put yourself in front of. They talk about that on web marketing. Where whoever's searching for you, put yourself in front of them. So at Ragdale Hall, the majority of people are sort of mid-30s, late 50s, early 60s, predominantly women, and often they're suffering from uh, fears, phobias, depression, panic attacks and anxieties. Hallelujah. But sometimes they know people that work for people. Okay. This is over approximately about, yeah, about 10 years. One particular corporate client has paid me that. 
Was that good, yes or no? Was that alright? That was a half an hour talk, good like that. Bit about right for him this size, yeah? yeah? Now if I pull out the beginning, it sort of scares people to go, fine. Okay, that, that's over a number of years. But that's been a nice steady income, doing some coaching with their team, with their sales team. I can remember the first person that came up to me, his name was Graham. It came up after a laughter therapy talk I did. That was just one of the talks I used to do. Laughter therapy was based on just having some fun and just showing people how they can use their minds a little tiny bit. The stretch, you know the orgasmic moan, we did that and some other things. And how to change the mindset very quickly. And it was a very sort of free, gentle chat that I used to have with them. And I'd turn up at Ragdale, no, no notes, nothing. No PowerPoint. I'm not glass overkill at, at Ragdale. In a room like this, this is just being used as a training aid because I thought let's have a training session. Okay, so I'm do doing the talk. On that particular night, my grandmother had died, someone was very close to me, and I thought I've still got to do the talk because I've promised them. So I, I turned up, not feeling too happy to do laughter therapy. Does that make sense in the room? Yeah? I think at the time I'd go back, yes, there was also something else that was happening. I was just at the edge of going full time in practice. This was about 11, 12 years ago, and the company said that they didn't want to pay me my commissions either that I was working for. So a lot of pressure. Yeah, I can understand where Andy was coming from. So I thought, well, I better fake it, hadn't I? And just pretend I can do laughter stuff tonight. So did my talk, did my presentation, finished off with something. If I can finish off today, I'd like to show you what I used to do at the end of the presentation to make it memorable. And this guy comes storming towards me. I thought, oh, fuck off. Yeah, excuse my French, but I just I wasn't in a good place. Smiling when I said it. Yeah, yeah, can I help you? I want you to bring that into my company. Oh, really? I wasn't sort of the most sort of like upbeat in my mind. Why do you want me to do that? He said, because they get on my nerves, Gary. They really do. They get on my nerves. His name was Graham. Um, I won't name the company. Uh, and what I, I would also recommend is if you ever give any case histories, you make your mind change the name of the clients. This weekend I've heard two speakers talk about clients that I can definitely find out about them and I can recognise them. That is a no-no. Alright? No mention. Confidentiality is vital. How do you think the audience member are going to feel if you talk about people that may, they might know? I always think there might be someone in the room that knows someone who knows someone I'm talking about. I will change everything. Because this particular guy brought me, and I won't even tell you his background, because if I did, you could find out more about him. But he was a chief executive that was fed up with his team, and I said to him, I haven't got a clue how much to charge you. He said, OK, will this be OK? Let's see if you can see this in the back of the room. This is now for just for me to go for half a day, do some training with the team. Yes or no? Yes. I said, yes, that'll be fine. It really will. <laughs> and he said, do you think you could sort of fit three days in over the next month? Let me think about it. My dad was a bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The month that he asked me to do that was the month the company didn't pay me no money. It was December. It was Christmas month. And I had no money at all. My grandma had just died. And I was going to talk on laughter therapy. And a the guy then says that. Now, whether you want to believe in serendipity or not, or coincidence, at that point I did. <laughs> I was happy to believe that. Yeah, this guy introduced me to so many people, they got funded and it was great. That's what kicked it all off. Okay? All because I had the talk in my mind, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and it was build a lot of fun and a lot of laughter. Yeah? The most important thing is that when you've actually sort of done your talk, so you've got your preparation sorted, so let's see what we've done. The icebreaker, then we had, okay, what did we talk about? What's hypnosis? Do you remember that one? Yeah, what's hypnosis? How's it done? Okay, there's, there's point number three. The fourth point is, who do, we, who do we treat? You know, what type of people can we see? And remember, in the room, there might be people very highly qualified in medicine, psychologists, psychiatrists. So again, I'm not going to make any assumptions. I'm not going to be someone I'm not. I'm going to say it as it is and how I work with my clients. And you know, the people in the room, if they are way above on the qualification that I will be medically, accept that. That's fine. They know that that's, that's the way it is. And the final bit, point five, is your close. Now I've got to be stories, case studies, testimonials. They're the sort of things you can sort of begin to close and wrap your talk up with. Yes, yeah, so you're wrapping up. Remember, what's your objective? What's your objective when you give that presentation, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, you're looking for clients or referrals, yes or no, yeah? yeah. And you've got to make sure they've got a means of way of contacting you. Sue, the two Sues, do you think you could hand those forms out for me, please? Okay. What I've done, okay, as a way of putting something together for conference, okay, I will finish at one, where possible, okay? That's my timing. 
I've put together something which is a package, a packet of information that you might be interested in. Okay? As a speaker, I'm quite privileged to present to the IPH. I know that. I don't take that for granted. I don't even, I give my talk, okay? I don't charge rubber fee if I'm talking to other groups. If it was a group like this, this fee would at least be £1,500 for my time, at least. Okay, I just won't do that. But I did ask Rob, can I make an offer to the members? He said yes. So would you allow me just one minute to talk about that? Would that be right, everyone? Yeah? Because if you're in front of a group, you've got to overcome this thing called social phobia to talk about yourself because they might be interested. You should just do it. There really is a point where, you know, all the excuses I hear, you're on about more confidence. We'll look at that in a second. This will take just a couple of moments to do. Okay, so we put a special offer together. It's a package of information. It's a talk I did at Ragdale Hall. It's a proper talk on hypnotherapy. You can listen to the crowd, listen to the audience, ask me questions. I did a live recording in the clinic, just talking out these thoughts. Probably a different angle for you. I did a, a, a wonderful talk to a business group that I, I, I took out. It's called the Vimto Story. I went to the factory where they make Vimto and I talk about how they treated me and how I was looked after. And from that talk, I make audio notes. I actually break down the talks and talk to you about how you can make that happen in your own business. Is that good? Yes or no? Yeah? We put together some PowerPoint presentations as well. So you've got them to hand. And what I'm also going to throw in there is a couple of letters of introduction. How to promote yourself as a hypnotherapist in your local area to get more speaking engagements. And in addition to that, I'm happy to throw in a year's support on email or telephone. First of all, I know there's people in the room that have been on my workshops and I've said, look, if you want, call me any time. On the sales and marketing, it's lifetime. For as long as you're alive anyway, you can call me. You can drop me an email, no problem at all. And you know, not many people do that, so I can quite offer that, open that, and I know that a few will contact me, but you can. Now, if you're looking through that, you see, I can easily charge it out for £497, £495, easy. No doubt at all. But today, it's £47. Okay, if you place an order with Sue, see it either before lunch or during today, it's £47. If you contact us tomorrow, it's £147. That's the deal. Alright, we'll get the packages shipped out with you within the next 7 to 10 days. Everyone okay with that? Yeah, and what I've done, I've put the offer together, about two minutes away, I've put the offer together so you can see how I would probably promote. I've gone a bit overboard with it, for some of you might not like it, so what? I really don't care. I don't care if some of you don't like my style. I just can't care enough on the minority. I care for the majority. Okay, and that was like, give you some information. Give you the tools you can go away with. Confidence comes from just feeling comfortable about doing it, it comes from practice. How many people in the room learn to ride a bike? Can I have a show of hands? Quickly, come on, learn to ride a bike. How many people fell off the bike when they were learning? Quickly. Okay. What happened for you to get back on the bike? What happened very quickly? What happened? Did someone say, come on, get back on again? Did they encourage you? Yeah. Did you feel a bit nervous? Yes or no? Yeah? yeah? Did you fall off? Yes or no? Yeah? Did you get back on again? For most people, yes. So why did you do it? Because you wanted to do it, yes? You didn't believe in failure, did you, as a child? Yes or no? No! Until you learn the word failure, you just sort of falling off the bike, what everyone else did, get back on! That's it! Get yourself booked for the next couple of months, two or three talks, go do it! Just fucking do it! <laughs> it's easy! It's easy! Neil French invited me a couple of years ago, when he was here as the president, to talk to the IH. That's about the first time I spoke to a group. I thought, well, I'll just do it, they're about to do it. And it was on sport and motivation, fine. I thought, I think I'd do more of them. When I spoke at Ragdale, I was paid £20 initially to go there. And I thought it was a lot of money for an hour. Then WX Smith rang me up because I can talk about them, they gave me a testimonial. Someone was at Ragdale Hogs. The place that you want, proximity is important. Be at the places that your potential clients may be. Yeah? You know, health spas, things like that. People are spending, you know, 60 quid a month on the gym. These are people you want to bring on board as clients. Yeah, they can afford it. They invited me to speak. Kodak had six people in the audience, five heckled me for an hour. One lady came up at the end, she goes, oh, that was a bit tough, Gary. I said, that's fine, it's about right for a room this size. <laughs> she said, I'm from Kodak, do you think you could do a presentation at one of our conferences? Well, oh, see what my diary's like. Yeah, you will get opportunities like that, definitely. I think we could do Bring Me Sunshine, would that yes. be right? Okay, I always finish off with my talks at Health Farms and with groups with a little tiny song called Bring Me Sunshine. Has you heard of that one? Tell show of hands? Yeah. Eric Morecambe. Eric Morecambe. Morecambe, can you stand up for a second because Rob's just going to help me out on this. Would you happen to have the audio? Would that be alright? Yeah, alright.
<laughs> yeah, if you could do that, that would be cool, mate. That would be cool. <laughs> Bring me sunshine in your smile. Bit of a sweat in the room. Bring me laughter. I can see in the back row, you're not singing all the while. And if you don't know the words, just mine. In this world where we live, there should be more happiness. So much joy you can give to this brand new bright tomorrow. Make me happy. If you feel comfortable, arms on the shoulders of people next to you. Bit of a sway. Never bring me any tears. Let your arms be as warm as the sun from up above. Bring me fun, bring me sunshine, bring me love. This is the time to express this cereal. Me sunshine in your smile. Bring me laughter all the while in this world where we live. Can we have a bit more energy, ladies and gentlemen, please? So much joy you can bring to this brand new bright tomorrow. Make me happy. You're nearly there. That last bit of tension, let it go. Bring me any tears. One last verse to go. Let your arms be as warm as the sun from up above. A bit loud, let's go for it. Come on, let's go for it. Love, sweet love. One more, let's go. Be fun. Bring me sunshine. Bring me love. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Gary Foster. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Brilliant. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee Gary. That's why we get back here. Okay. Uh, lunch is being served. If you like to make